Well, this is Oracle stepping up to become title partner, so we'll become Oracle Red Bull Racing, um, which is tremendously exciting because we get to utilize the suite of tools and specialist services that you know, Oracle have. They're going to help us track side. It's going to help us, you know, with our uh, fan engagement program. Um, it's going to help us, you know, with all, all aspects of what we do. And, and of course, the new powertrains, you know, business as well. So uh, we're delighted with this partnership and really excited for what it brings, particularly for the fans and the experience we'll be able to offer. We've had a tremendous experience with the team over the past year. And what we were really focused on is learning uh, and trying to understand all the ways that a Formula One team needs the best technology to win on the track and to win in their business and so they can be efficient and effective. So using our cloud infrastructure platform, the team has been able to run literally billions of simulations for every race weekend to explore the optimal strategy based wow. on what's unique about that race. So it's been great and we're looking to enhance that even more going forward by adding a, a number of really interesting machine learning and AI projects to try and automate things that previously were pretty manual. Well, data is our, our lifeblood. So, you know, technically being able to tap into all the tools that Ariel's just mentioned, you know, is of tremendous value for us as uh, we're a data hungry, you know, business, but also for our fans to be able to provide, you know, a better platform, a better experience. It's gonna be, you know, fantastic for us and something we're really looking forward to. Yeah, this paddock experience is great. And I highly encourage those of you who haven't signed up already to go check it out because it's a great place to be able to get really unique content gear and experiences. And we're gonna be adding more and more personalization and some special things that you're just gonna to have to check out to see. I think 2021 will go down in history of one of the all time great years. I mean, it, I can't remember a year like that in Formula One where it was so close between the two drivers from the very first race to the very last. Our the challenge is now to build on that. Now we have that number one on the car is to keep it on the car and defend that title, you know, with Max, which with a brand new set of regulations is going to be, you know, incredibly difficult. We've got massive, you know, competition out there, but, uh, you know, motivation is sky high and we're riding on the crest of a wave from last year. Well, you can always learn. You're always improving. You can always learn from previous experience. But of course, with a complete new set of regulations, it's going to be all about the development, how quickly, you know, the teams get on top of this set of new regulations. The biggest regulation change for probably, you know, 30 to 40 years in Formula One. So development's going to be thick and fast. And of course, with a cost cap, it's got to be efficient. Well, we're aiming very much to build on what we achieved last year. So uh, the target is to try and you know, obviously retain the title. And uh, the big unknown is, have we missed something with these regulations? Has another team stolen a march because of the focus and effort that went into 2021? We believe we've got a good car. RB18 is, uh, you know, coming to life. Mm -hmm. uh, and seeing it, you know, today is, is, is fantastic. So it's a culmination of a huge effort from the team and, uh, you know, looking forward to seeing it out on the track in anger because with a new regulation change, the whole philosophy of the regulations has, has, has altered from last year. So that means that every single component is brand new this year. And uh, you know, with it being a ground effect car, with it being designed to make overtaking hopefully easier, the cars easier to follow each other, that's uh, changed the whole philosophy you know, of how we design these cars. So um, it's a steep learning curve. It's steep for everyone. And it's a race of development between first race and the last race. Well, it grew throughout last year and, and you saw the culmination of that in the teamwork in the latter races, particularly in Abu Dhabi. And, you know, Checo in his first year winning that race in Azerbaijan, you know, other podiums. He's going to be, you know, stronger and taking a step up, I'm sure, in 2022. And for Max, I mean, he was just phenomenal last year and uh, an outstanding season for him. You know, he dominated the amount of laps led, you know, at 10 Grand Prix victories uh, and, of course, the World Championship. So his confidence is going to be sky high and looking to build on those performances in 2022. You must have been massively proud of them last year. You can kind of feel that sometimes with you three together. You can see how proud you are watching on. Well, I think the most important thing was we really worked strongly as a team and to see the two drivers working and supporting each other, to see the strength and depth that we have in the team, the way that they coped, you know, through the pandemic to continue to develop, you know, the car the way that we did and to deal with the challenges that we faced last year has really galvanized the team. And I think that uh, we go into 2022 in great shape and are looking forward to, you know, the season ahead. 
I'm just looking forward to uh, to get back in the car and, and start driving it, you know, to uh, to see how everything is handling. Um, but uh, yeah, I had a good good bit of time off and uh, yeah, recharge to uh, to go driving again. It was an intense season, you know, getting up to speed with a with a new team, especially uh, the team that was fighting for for the championship since race one. So there really no time for for any adaptation. It was straight into it. It was really challenging, but very enjoyable. You know, we we gave it all until the very last lap of the season. Well, you know, a lot is unknown um, about the car. So personally, I feel good. I mean, um, what is important is that you, you prepare yourself in the best way possible physically. Um, but yeah, in terms of the, the, the car, you don't know. So that's why I think I'm also very curious to see how the car is behaving on track. Feels like we were in Abu Dhabi yesterday, but um, in the other hand, I'm so excited to start a new season. You know, we're already working a lot with the with the engineers, and, and we just cannot wait to to be on track. You know, with with these new cars, uh, and yeah, we're starting from zero, all of us. No, I mean, I just do what I I I do all the time. I mm. think um, there is no reason to suddenly be different. Um, and uh, of course, uh, as a driver now with the new regulations, you have to. You know, get used to the car. It's not like you just jump in and it's just an upgrade from last year. Mm. Um, so that is going to be the biggest adaptation. But the rest, um, yeah, I think it's pretty straightforward. I think uh, just to be back to to normal um, things, you know, to to have more interaction with the fans, be able to yeah feel more their support, and and um, that's something I'm definitely looking forward to. You know, we with Formula One, we've been so uh, restricted in the last couple of years. So yeah. Looking forward to that, and uh, yeah, most, most of the races, you know, the fans, Formula One is growing so much around the world that I, I'm looking forward to to all of them, really. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's definitely um, one of the, the highlights for me in, in the season. Um, so, uh, yeah, looking forward to see what we can do there again. Hopefully they will be just as crazy as they were last year. Uh, but also, you know, like new Grand Prix coming on the calendar, always very interesting, um, you know, Miami. Let's see how that is going yeah. to turn out. To good racing, you know. Um, these new regulations are set to improve the racing. And I really hope that uh, for us as the drivers, we are able to compete more during the race, to be able to follow each other a lot closely. And, uh, and for the fans, you know, that we can give them a great entertainment, great racing, and uh, that will be really nice. Just getting to know the car, to be honest, because yeah. I really don't know how it's going to feel like. So I'm really looking forward to that first moment when you drive out of the, the pit lane and you do your first few laps. Well, the biggest change, obviously, is from a regulationary point of view, the car is a lot cleaner. There's not all the added bits that were on last year's car. The whole concept of this car is to try and promote overtaking and close racing. So it's a, it's a new concept, it's a new philosophy, and it's a clean sheet of paper for every single team. I think it takes a bit of a while until you are 100% with it. I think, you know, we have a massive change of regulations with the tires as well. They're going to be different. Uh, the racing, you know, apparently we're going to be able to, to follow it closely. So there's a lot of things that we as a driver have to learn as a team. So definitely very interesting these, these new regulations. Well, because it's new regulations, it's going to evolve very, very quickly. I mean, I think by the time we get to the first race, the car's not going to look very much like this. And I think the evolution will be very, very quick yeah. as we progress through the, through the season. For me, actually, the biggest thing is just the, the view in the cockpit with these big tires like to hit an apex in some tight corners uh is a bit more difficult the driving i mean it just feels like the car is a bit less grip but you will you will get used to that um that's why we have the the practice days you can get used to the sliding and locking and and stuff like like that but i think you know it should be fine it's just getting a bit more used to to the view well it's always exciting to go racing again i mean 2021 was such a massive year for us but it's been flat out ever since you know with this new car you know and it's always exciting the start of a new season to see you know where do we fare compared to our you know competitors it seems like only <laughs> yesterday since i last saw them but you know they hopefully they've uh, you know sobered up after you know the end of last year and a, and a good christmas and new year so uh, yeah. You know, they're looking fit and strong, so that's important. Well, it's been a very unusual process, this one. Um, it's a huge regulation change, biggest one we've had since 1983 when the um, Venturi cars were banned and flat bottom cars introduced. So the aerodynamic changes which lead as a representation to this are designed to help overtaking. So the theory is that if you create a shape where 
as the downforce is produced, that always um, kind of produces a posh at the back of the car. So you get this kind of rooster tail coming up at the back. If that then back fills or side fills from underneath, then the wake from the follow from the car is, is goes above the car that's following it. So therefore the car behind keeps its downforce much better than it does currently. What they wanted to do is clearly to create the generate the downforce from the ground compared to before was was generated by the ground, but also mainly by the front wing, rear wing, mm -hmm. and the bodywork. It will affect for sure the ride of the car, the mechanical grip, and for sure the drag of the car. Because this generation of downforce is quite efficient, then yeah. this type of car should be a lot quicker on the straight at ISO level of downforce. Well, the nose box is certainly longer, so wherever you put your split for front of chassis into the structure at the front, that structure has got a lot longer, the overhang is greater. Uh, the thinking is, Road relevance is that majority of road cars now have relatively big wheels, but they also come with pretty low profile tires. Mm -hmm. We've come up on the wheel size to 18 inches as a, as a line in the sand. Um, it's certainly put a bit of weight onto the car. Yeah. Um, the tire is bigger overall, so it has a fairly significant aerodynamic effect. And uh, then you've got the characteristics of the big tire to try and understand as well. We'd all sort of got reasonable knowledge of last year's ones. It's a bit of a... New, uh, new drawing board for us, isn't it?